so thanks very much. I see some familiar faces here, so a little bit of the beginning of this might be familiar. Um, last last uh, uh, February, we we talked about lots of the details uh, it, that uh, we've used to get our houses to net zero, particularly the energy conservation ends of it. Now we're, we're going to talk about uh, how we, uh, a sort of a step-by-step -step process. Designing a house is always a, a complex process and um, uh, as we've gone through it a few times, we've, we, and, and, and designing a net zero energy house is, a, is an even more complex process, and, uh, but we've started to see some patterns emerge, and, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about. And, and um, I may, I, I'm not going to talk specifically about, you know, exact costs. Uh, it's hard to do. They vary a lot from house to house. I'm, I'm going to talk in relative terms about, about cost. Um, the, the, uh, but before I start, I want to thank a few people. You know, I always feel a little sensitive up here. We've done lots in, in this area, but we couldn't have done any of it without a huge amount of support, and uh, lots of it on a volunteer basis. We, we've had uh, great uh, help and partnership with Gordon Howell from Howell Mayhew Engineering and uh, Andy Smith from Seoul North Engineering. CMHC was very helpful with our first one. And then I, I want to single out the people for whom we're building the next two, the, the uh, Belgravia and the, and the Mill Creek House. You know, if we'd have stopped after the Riverdale project, we really wouldn't have learned or we, we wouldn't have achieved very much, I think. We, we made some mistakes, uh, we, we got some things right, but uh, without the opportunity to do it again and to refine it and uh, really uh, watch ourselves go through the process, uh, we, we, we would, uh, you know, we just wouldn't have made anywhere near the progress. It's now getting to be somewhat uh, routine and, and uh, you know, we're in the position to be able to talk about uh, about how we think you should go about it. Um, so I, I mean, these are far-sighted people. They're they're gambling their money, basically, uh, real leaders. And I I, uh, I really thank them. Uh, and we're we're about to uh, embark on an adventure with a, a third family to to do our fourth one, which we'll talk a little bit about. Habitat Studio. Just uh, for anybody who hasn't been here before, we're custom house designers. Most of what we we build, almost all of them, would meet the requirements of the R2000 program. They'd have R28 walls, you know, right right in around an, an air change or a little bit more an hour. Uh, high efficiency uh, furnaces, hot water tanks, uh, and HRVs, uh, triple glazed windows, and uh, uh, good levels of insulation everywhere. So so it, we weren't. You know, it was kind of a natural for us to, to embark on net zero energy. So just to be clear about uh, what net zero energy is, a net zero energy house produces all of its own energy uh, for heating, domestic hot water, lighting and appliances on site over the course of the year. So we don't care so much when we get it, as long as it adds up to zero at the end of the year so that the energy produced is equal to or greater than the energy consumed. People also talk about net zero ready and uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well it's it's uh, the design process is exactly the same um, if, if you are preparing for a house that you might make net zero in the future you, you pretty much have to go through the same process and you and make sure that you model the uh, renewable energy that you're going to collect in the future otherwise you can't really uh, honestly say that you expect the house to be net zero um, and lots of sites are are uh, are, are difficult, uh, and we'll we'll go into that in a bit. Uh, but uh, in, in some sites, it's just not practical. It's not uh, possibly. It may, it may not be possible to uh, to get to net zero, and uh, and uh, you can do there. You do the best you can. I, I looked around and I couldn't find a real sort of hard and fast uh, definition for near net zero, but. Um, uh, we're, you know, when, when we can't get to net zero or the owners are, are not interested, we're, we'll get as close as we can. So just to put it in context, we've done three net zero projects here in Edmonton. The first is the CMHC one, the Riverdale Net Zero Project, which is a duplex. The second one was is for a family over in Mill Creek, uh, Conrad Nobert and, and uh, his wife and two children, and is a about uh, 2,000 square feet with a finished basement uh, suite. And the third one is is uh, f uh, in Belgravia. It's uh, in around the same size, just a little bit smaller, and also has a, a finished basement suite uh, for uh, Bob Heath, who's here tonight. 
And the, the fourth one that we're doing, and we'll just mention that a little bit, is, a, is out in Parkland County on a, a quite a, a good site. Uh, it's a little bigger. It's about 4,000 square feet. It's expected to house eight, uh, eight people, um, in, including uh, parents, uh, both uh, people in the couple. And um, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're expecting to start that one uh, in the next, uh, w within the next month for sure. We're just waiting for permits at the moment. And I'm also going to talk about a, uh, a house that we did uh, a year or so ago that's near net zero, just, uh, just by contrast, because I think to be realistic, that's where, where lots of houses will end up. So the, the objective really is trying to keep the cost down, because the housing is already expensive. Better housing will always cost more, but if we don't focus on doing it efficiently and making the right decisions, it could be extraordinarily expensive. Some of the the equilibrium houses had equ uh, incremental costs in the, you know, in excess of two hundred thousand dollars to to get to net zero. Uh, in uh, I think both of the ones in Red Deer were in that range. Um, the, the Riverdale house was around uh, $110,000 per unit, uh, and then we've gotten the the incremental cost for the um, the Belgravia and the uh, Mill Creek houses down in the down around uh, 60 to 70 thousand dollars. So <clears throat> it's hard to see how we're going to get. Uh, too much uh, lower than that, um, although the biggest chunk of the incremental cost is the renewable systems, particularly the photovoltaic, and that is coming down. So going through the, the when we got to the third house, it, it started to feel somewhat familiar, and, and th that's when a light came on, and, uh, and I realized that there was a series of steps that we, we should follow, and following them in order would mean a lot less sort of going back and redesigning to, to accommodate various things. And, it's, and design is always an iterative process where, where, where there is a certain amount of going back and looping and, and checking decisions against earlier decisions, but um, this is a rough order in which we found it practical to proceed. Um, so the, starting with site assessment, you you do the normal uh, evaluation of of a site, uh, look to see where the views are, what the municipal setbacks are, where where the light is at various times of the day. I mean, the first job really is you know for this house to last and be durable and cared for is make make it a great place to live. So, so you know th those those things have always got to be taken into account. And then the, the next step would be to evaluate the solar potential. Uh, and if you're considering buying a lot, you know, that, that's got to be a key factor in that assessment. I'm just going to, to uh, skip ahead a little bit. This is a slide that summarizes the renewable energy collection. And I particularly want to draw your attention to the passive solar gain versus the photovoltaic production. You can see that, that in both Mill Creek and Belgravia, we're actually getting more usable energy through our south-facing windows than we are with our, our forty to $50,000 photovoltaic system. And, and that, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a key consideration, something very, very important to, to uh, factor in there. Without that, the the cost of the of the uh, renew, renewable energy on site would get to be prohibitive if it's even possible. You'd probably run out of room before you ran out of dollars, uh, you know, if if you had them. So it's it's really a, uh, an important thing to keep in mind. I think.